Welcome to the Proto Art. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. What's up everybody? Hopefully everyone's safe out there. I wanted to do a very quick demo on how to blur a face. One using ScreenFlow and the also in Final Cut Pro. So there are multiple ways to do this. There are different plugins you can purchase. There's in-app the things you can use to manipulate the footage. I just wanted to show you two that I found that work best for me. So with ScreenFlow, they have built-in filters that you can choose by selecting this little plus button here. It'll give you different options. You can choose blurs, you can choose video uh, effects, you can color correct. It gives you a few options, although these aren't as accurate. They're more global, meaning they affect everything within your, your image here. I don't want that. I just want to blur the face. So to do that, let me close this. We're going to use the callouts that come in ScreenFlow. So on the top bar here, you have a few different tabs. The one we're going to focus on is this one right here. You click on that and it's called callouts. So with callouts selected, you're going to press action. Now you see this little yellow bar just came on the screen here. Anything within this region is something we can manipulate. So you can extend it, you can shrink it down, you can move it over, get real specific where you want this callout to affect. So I'm going to want it for this whole frame. So I'm going to extend this past all of our video. So had this been a different kind of video where my cursor was on screen, I'd have the option to do the same effect with the mouse uh, or the foreground window. If there's a different window in the foreground, but since it's just my footage, there is none. So I just choose freehand. So you have two different kind of options you can choose from here. You can choose from the square or circle. So the square option here allows me to select the whole region, a section of my video, and whatever I manipulate within these controls are only going to affect within what's in this uh, square. If I hit the tab, it'll blur my background. But if I want to just blur the face, just increase this little dial here. I can say how much of the opacity of the background I want to be seen. We're not worried about that right now, so I'll leave it full. But this is okay, but not as accurate as I would love. You can also use the action callout to zoom up an image. So anything selected, I can zoom up. Uh, so let me bring this back to its default by hitting Command Z, undoing this. So the other option here is this little circle. It gives you the freehand option. So adjusting the size, you can see my circle increasing. So it's getting really large or really small. So if I wanted to just affect a particular area with my mouse, paint whatever area I want to focus on having that blur. So maybe I just wanted the top half of my head up to the eyes or something. We're getting artsy, okay. <laughs> and I'm moving this little dial, boom, now the top half is blurred. Now this is okay, it creates the basic effect we want. Now the problem is, you notice it's not tracking along with my image. So that's one, one of my big gripes with this uh, particular version of ScreenFlow. There is no tracking option. So I can't go frame by frame and tell it to follow along the face. So we're going to hop on over to Final Cut Pro. Now like ScreenFlow, there are multiple ways to do this. So you find what works best for you. So first off, we're going to go and select our clip under the video tab. This is where we'll see any effects that we apply, right? So we want to blur the face. I'll put a link to which plugin I use in this demo. I have my video selected. There you go. Facial blur. And if I scroll over, it'll kind of demo what the effect's going to do. So I drag this effect onto my video clip. And it created this little, little button here, right? So we're going to center it right in the face. So they have multiple ones like this available online. This is just the one I'm using. I can affect the scale, the XY axis, or the, the height and width. 
I can also adjust the roundness. I can have it feathered, meaning it's more of a gradual effect. I can also invert the mask, having anything outside of that selected area affected, effectively blurring my background. But I want the face to be blurred. You can adjust the blur amount. Notice as I turn the dial to the left or to the right, it becomes softer or harsher as far as the pixelation. I can defocus an area. It almost smooths out the little pixelation. And that's more of the look I want it to go for. So we'll be a little fine tuning with the width and the height. That yeah, looks about right. So the next step, if you want to get real intuitive with this, and the power of Final Cut Pro is being able to create keyframes. Now, keyframes are basically little points in time that you tell whatever system you're using to tell it at this very frame, I want you to do this. So if my video is moving, I don't really have my head moving around too much. But let's just say my face moves to the left from this position, right? So we're going to create first a keyframe in the very beginning. Position. I'll just click this little button here. Boom. Adds a keyframe. Now, had my face moved further to the left and to the right, I'd go to where it moved. And I would create another keyframe on the position side. Remember, this is affecting both the X and Y axis. If it moved again back to the left, I can scroll further down and create another keyframe. So with this, I can indicate where I want my effect to take place very specifically. So you can track the movement in the face. Once again, there are other plugins that do this as well. This is just the one that I chose to use for this demo. Now to kind of complete this overall blurred disguise identity, we do have to mask the voice, right? Now to complete the last step, let's focus on the audio. So there are a few different options you have here. There's a built-in feature in Final Cut Pro as well as one in Logic. Final Cut Pro is pretty straightforward. So to achieve this, let's click on our audio tab. I'll start from scratch as I was tinkering with this a little earlier. Make sure we have our video selected. Final Cut Pro, you click the effect, drag it over to your footage, let go. And you'll see our pitch now popped up. Now to expand the screen and see it a little further, there's a little button here. You click that. Now we can see what we can manipulate within this footage. So we simp simply slide the slider to the left or right to either make it lower or higher in pitch. So I'm going to drag it to the left. Here's a quick video demonstration on how to mask yourself in Final Cut. And maybe even increase the smoothness of the effect. Here's a quick video demonstration on how to mask yourself in Final Cut Pro. So let's also t uh, tinker around with uh, what comes with logic. So I'm going to click this little check mark here to kind of mute that effect. Let's compare. Let's go back to the beginning of our clip. And this is Logic's pitch shifter. Pretty much the same uh, amount of what you can affect, just slightly different design. Here's a quick video demonstration on how to mask yourself in Final Cut Pro. Except this gives you an option of mix, so you can have the full amount of just the effect. Here's a quick video demonstration or a mix of your original voice and the effect. I kind of like it being slightly mixed in with the original. I'm going to mask yourself in Final Cut Pro. Illustration. I'm going to mask yourself in Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to drop this down a little, a little bit there. For the demonstration, I'm going to mask yourself in Final Cut Pro. Anyway, guys. A very quick demo like i said there are many ways to do this it doesn't hurt to learn new styles and new techniques to achieve this effect though have fun be safe and i'll talk to you guys later